There's a lot to analyse, comment on and pull apart in the world of investment and politics. And one area that's come under the microscope for its blatant deceit at the moment is the pharmaceutical industry. Drug companies have been accused of misleading consumers before. We don't have to think too far back to remember the scandal that was splashed across the newspapers about the multi-packaging of Nurofen pain relief tablets. So what is it about our relationship with pain relief medication that makes us so vulnerable? So much so that another very prominent player, this time Voltaren, has fallen foul to the very same conduct as its competitive counterpart, Nurofen. For years, Voltaren Osteogel has been marketed as having added ingredients for the relief of arthritic pain and osteoinflammation, when in fact, it has now been proven to have the exact same ingredients as regular Voltaren used for muscular inflammation. What's worse is that Voltaren Osteogel was selling for 33% more than the regular. As a result, the manufacturers, GlaxoSmithKline and Novartis, have been fined by the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission. But are the fines high enough to stop businesses simply seeing the fines as a cost of doing business? A cost of doing business that's often outweighed by the profits these companies make from engaging in this unethical activity. And at the end of the day, it's the consumers who will pay the price. It's Katrina Bullock reporting. The Rocks, the traditional home of the Gadigal people and the very first place of European settlement in Australia. An iconic place with plenty of secrets to share and the best part is you don't have to go very far to find them. This historic landmark has so many spine chilling stories to tell hidden deep inside this sandstone handmade brick. The very rock face that gave this area its name. But it's not only the historic value that will draw you here. Locals and tourists mingle at the open air market, purchasing a smorgasbord of cosmopolitan street foods and handmade fashions. And of course, this area is host to some of Sydney's oldest pubs, with the more upscale ones boasting magnificent views. Enjoying some time in the rocks is a must-do, quintessentially Sydney experience that locals have been enjoying for hundreds of years. The perfect way to escape the everyday. Good afternoon. This is Katrina Bullock with Business News Headlines. The ASX ended the session on an upbeat note, with traders choosing to pick up miners and banks ahead of the weekend. BHP Billiton shares pushed above $29 for the first time since June 2015, before closing up 0.9% at $29.10. And MJH Group, the nation's sixth biggest home builder, has upped its stake in eighth-ranked Simmons Group to just under the 20% takeover threshold, with the news sending Simmons shares surging up 20% to $0.36 cents on Thursday. And TAT's shareholders have approved the $11.3 billion merger with almost 99% of voters voting in favour of Tabcorp purchasing all issued TATS shares. Shares in TATS closed 2.41% higher to $4.68. Stay tuned with more on these stories coming up after the break. We all get to those moments in life where we venture in to the no-go zone. I'm talking about stress. Those moments where you keep going despite your mind and your body screaming for you to stop. Not to worry, because today I'm taking you to a holistic wellness retreat called Kemalaya, where you'll be able to regroup and find spiritual, emotional, physical and psychological balance through mindfulness and meditation. This stunningly beautiful and peaceful environment will embrace your tired self and offer you a range of unique, specifically tailored programs designed to give you the tools and resources you need to better manage your life. From fitness and detox programs, right through to a variety of yoga sessions, delicious and nutritious cuisine, and my personal favorite, the stress and burnout program. The overall experience here at Kamalaya will be life-changing. It 
was the late 1980s and Don Burke was one of the biggest stars in Australian TV. Amanda Pepe was 20 and working as a TV journalist in Broken Hill when Don Burke arrived in town. Burke was in the rural New South Wales town to film stories on artist Pro Heart and Miss Pepe was assigned to cover the visit. Soon after, she resigned from her job, packed up her house and booked a flight to Sydney. Amanda Pepe knew things were out of the ordinary when she was greeted with a rose on the passenger seat of Burke's vehicle. He personally fetched her to take her to the hotel and the conversation immediately became sexual in nature with continuous advances allegedly made to her by Burke throughout the course of his employment. Advances which she now regrets not having reported at the time. This is only one of many complaints denied by Don Burke regarding sexual harassment. We'll keep you up to date with more news as this story unfolds over the next few weeks. This is Katrina Bullock.